All right, we are finally on the last, the investigative task, free response number six for the 2023 AP exam. Um, as usual, if I have any mistakes, I'll put it in the comments or the description because the solutions aren't out yet. I've heard this one was tough, so I want to go through it and explain what I, how I would do it if I, you know, this is my best shot at what I would do in a problem here. So a jewelry company uses a machine to apply coating of gold on a certain style of necklace. The amount of gold applied to the necklace is approximately normally distributed. So they told us it's normally distributed. When the machine is working properly, the amount of gold net is 300 milligrams and a standard deviation. A necklace is randomly selected from the necklaces produced by the machine. Assuming that the machine is working properly, calculate the probability that the amount of gold applied to the necklace is between 296. So this is for a single sample. You know that it's normally distributed. You know that the mean is 300 milligrams. You know the standard deviation is 5 milligrams, and you would like to know the probability that's between 296 and 304. Okay, that's going to be a normal CDF. Okay, and I would, you know, just kind of, that's the air, that like, it's the area under this curve here. So I always draw the picture. I always do that when I want to do area under curves like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is do distribution, and then we'll do normal CDF. The lower bound is 296. The upper bound is 304. The mean is 300. The standard deviation is 5. Okay, and that is, and so, um, and you can, you can write that if you want to, but usually the picture is sufficient. So that is a probability would equal 0 0.5763. So four decimal places, pretty standard for when you're writing that out. Jewelry company wants to make sure the machine is working properly. Each day, Clio, a st statistician at the jewelry company, will take a random sample of the necklaces produced each today, that day. Each selected necklace will be melted down and the amount of gold applied to that necklace will be determined. Because the necklace must be destroyed to determine the amount of gold applied, Clio will use a random size and equals two necklaces. Okay. <clears throat> um, so we'll do two samples every day. Clio starts by considering the mean amount of gold being applied to the necklaces. After Clio takes a random sample, so it's already random, she implodes a sample mean amount of gold applied to the two necklaces. So it's a sample mean amount to the two necklaces. Okay. Suppose the machine is working properly with the population mean amount being gold applying 300 milligrams and the population standard deviation of 5 milligrams. Calculate the probability that the sample mean and the amount of gold applied to a random sample of two necklaces will be greater than 303 milligrams. Um... Sample mean amount applied to the two necklaces. Okay, so I think, yeah, I, okay, so I get what they're saying. So now we have a sampling distribution. Now, how does the sampling distribution change? When I have a sample of n equals 2, you know, for our sampling distribution, the mean is still going to be 300, same as, the, popu same as the, the original one. However, the standard deviation of our population is the, is the standard deviation of the, sorry, the standard deviation of our sampling distribution is going to be the standard deviation of the population divided by a root n which in this case would be, uh, what was it, 5? Yeah, 5 divided by square root of 2. And then it's going to be almost the same thing. So, and then we want to greater than 303. So this is going to be 300. Our standard deviation is 5 over root 2. And we want the probability that's greater than 303. So I'm going to want this area over here. So that's, again, a normal CDF. It's just we're going to use a slightly different right, a, a different, um, so distribution, normal CDF, we use a slightly different standard deviation. So we're gonna go 303 all the way up to 1E99. Standard deviation is five divided by the square root of two though. It's a sampling standard deviation or sampling distribution. And 303, okay, I think that's right. So that would be 0 0.19, so that probability is going to equal 0 0.198. Okay, so we use you could say we're using normal CDF again. If you <clears throat> that's not clear. Okay, so suppose Clio took a random sample of n equals two necklaces that result in the sample mean amount of gold applied of 303 milligrams. Would that result indicate the population mean amount of gold being applied by the machine is different from 300 milligrams? Justify your answer without performing an inference procedure. Okay, so um, what you know the. I think the way you want to think about this <clears throat> is that you know there's a there's a t almost a twenty percent chance that it's going to be three hundred and three or greater. So if it was three hundred and three exactly, and then it's kind of like, well, that could be within the normal realm of variation, 
right? Um, so I would say, you would say like no, because the probability of randomly selecting two necklaces, uh, two necklaces and getting a mean amount of gold of um, 303 milligrams or greater is almost 20%. So it's just possible <clears throat> we got that result, got the 303 milligram sample, sample mean, by, by, by pure chance, right? That probability is pretty high, right? We say threshold more like 5%, less than 5%, then we say, well, it's probably not very likely. But this could just be pure chance. 20% is, you know, a pretty decent probability. So um, we can't conclude that. So um, would the result indicate? So I would say no. And I think I think I covered everything I wanted to say in there. Okay. Now Cleo will consider the variation in the amount of gold the machine applies to the necklaces. Because of the small sample size, Cleo will use a sample range of the data for two randomly select. Oh, you might ask. <clears throat> let me ask about this one. This I just want to, again, how come I'm doing a normal distribution? Well, I, I know the population. So some people be, might be like, well, how come I don't use TCDF? Well, they told you it is normally distributed. You know the population standard deviation. So when you sample that, the sample is also normally distributed, not T. See, remember, you only use the T distribution if you don't know the population standard deviation. But we do in this case, which is why I'm using normal CDF as opposed to like TCDF. OK. Let's see, because it's small sample size, Cleo will use the sample range of the data for the two randomly selected necklaces rather than the sample standard deviation. Um, okay. Um, let's see, because of the, uh, all right. Cleo will investigate the behavior of the range of sample size of n equals two. She will simulate the sampling distribution of the range and the amount of gold applied to two randomly sampled necklaces. Cleo generates 100,000 random samples of sine n equals two independent values from a normal distribution with a mean three, okay, so she generates this from a simulation. So she's using a simulation here. <clears throat> the range is calculated for the two observations each sample. The simulated sampling distribution is in the ranges in graph one. The process of repeating using sigma equal eight is shown in graph two, and sigma equals 12 is shown in graph three. Okay, so this is gonna weird. They're doing a, <clears throat> and they're doing a sample range, which you can only do by simulation. We don't have the statistical data to be like, well, what is the standard deviation or what is the, you know, um, we don't know how to analytically do that. So we're just doing it by simulation here. Use information, complete the following. Describe the sampling distributions of the sample range for random sizes, sample size n equals two from a normal distribution. Um, okay, decide the sampling distribution of the sample range from a normal distribution standard deviation of sigma equals, so I showed in graph one. So we want to describe this distribution. Okay. Um, we're just describing the, uh, so like when you're describing any distribution, almost like the first FRQ, we're gonna talk about the center. We're gonna talk the spread. <clears throat> we're gonna talk about the skew or shape, shape slash skew and any outliers. Uh, there's no outliers cause it's all simulation. So um, <clears throat> I would say the median. So if you look at relative frequency and you wanna calculate the median, median is about 50%. So this is like, 11, 11, 11, three, four, probably around this block right here would be where the 50th percentile is going to be. Cause these are each like, I don't know, like 11, 11, 11, 10, you know, like that's like 44. So probably this one. So I would say the median is about five. So the median is about the median sample. The median is, so that's the center. The median is about five. So the median of the distribution sample range distribution is about five. <clears throat> um, the, the distribution is skewed, is skewed right. That's the shape and the spread. I don't know, we'll say, the 
the largest range, I don't know, just say it's about 30. It's the, or you could say about like 20, 25. I don't know, somewhere around there, like maybe about 22. <clears throat> and the range and the range is about <clears throat> 20, <clears throat> 22. I don't know, is that fair? 22? Well, I'll call it 25. I don't know. I'm just eyeballing it, I think, just 25. That's where it ends about, is about 25. <clears throat> or you could talk about like, I don't know, like the 90th percentile or something like that. You could say the 99th percentile. Maybe I wouldn't say the range. Maybe I'd just say 99th percentile because there's like a tail end. I don't think it really matters if you say percentile range. I don't know. That's pretty picky to talk about. <clears throat> okay. And I don't think we should say outlier. I mean, if you want to be complete, just say there's no apparent outliers. Okay, describe how the distribution of the sample range of sample sizes changes the value of the population standard deviation increases. So what happens on these curves is that the range increases. The center also shifts, right? The center shifts further and further out. And I would say that the, 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 the median increases. The skew becomes less skewed. I don't know, like a little bit less skewed, a little bit more uniform. Or, or I'll just say less skewed. Uh, did I say uh, skewed right? Yeah. Um, it's a little bit less skewed, but it's still skewed right. But I would say it, you know, tends to, it generally speaking, I would say with the, the median increases as well as the 99th percentile, the 99th percentile as uh, sigma increases. What else would I say in that? Um, would I say anything about the shape? Um, it has, I, I would say something about like, it's kind of like a little flatter on the lower end. So it's like a little bit, there's less of a roll off, right? Like it's kind of like uniform. So the like less of a roll off, less of a roll off <clears throat> um, around the median. But still skewed right. Okay, <clears throat> let's see. <clears throat> Recall that Cleo needs to consider both the mean and standard deviation and the amount of gold applied to necklaces to determine whether the machine is working properly. So both the one month later, Cleo's again checking the machine to make sure it's working properly. She takes a random sample of two necklaces and calculates the sample mean is 303 and the sample range is 10 milligrams. Recall the machine is working properly if the amount of gold has a mean of this. So this is a range of 10 milligrams. <clears throat> consider Cleo's range of 10 milligrams from the sample size n equals two. If the machine is working properly with the standard deviation of five milligrams, is, is a sample range of 10 milligrams unusual? So let's look at 10 milligrams over here. So 10 milligrams would be right around this point. Is it unusual? Well, what percentage would we get like 10 or greater, right? Like, would we get 10 or greater? What's that area there? That's like 0 0.04 for that one. And that's like 0 0.03. This is 0 0.02. Like I'm trying to find this area here, right? This is another 0 0.02, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 0 0.01, and then another 0 0.01, and then I don't know, just say, like, let's say all that adds up to like 0.0, I don't know, just eyeballing at 0 0.01, and then it just add, a, add, 0, add another 0 0.02 for all of this stuff here. I don't want to add that all up. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, I don't know, 15%. I'd say 15%-ish or so. I would say, well, it contains 15%. So I would say it's not that unusual. I would say um, no, because about 15% of the simulated results. And I'm, you, you got to use the one with the five milligram ones. You can't use these other ones, right? You should be using this one here because this is where the standard use was five milligrams. Uh, the, the, because 50% of the simulated results had a range, uh, you know, range greater than, um, had a range greater than 10, milligra 10 milligrams. So there's not enough evidence, which, which is a pretty, this is a pretty high probability. <clears throat> Um, which is not that unusual, which is greater than five. We, we call what's unusual less than about 5%, which is great, so it's not that unusual.
Do Clio sample mean of 303 milligrams and range of 10 milligrams indicate the machine isn't work uh, working proper is, is indicate that the machine is not working properly. Sample mean and range indicate that the machine is not working properly. Wait, what's that? It's not unusual. So, no. There is not enough evidence. I don't know why they're saying there's both of these things. Because um, <clears throat> we concluded both of them are possible. So I'm a little confused about what they're asking why both of them. Because um, basically we said that that probability was like 20%. You don't just multiply the probabilities. I don't know if that's what they're thinking. Like you just say like... Um, oh, okay. I, I, I see what they're saying. Maybe... Um, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think we can. I don't know. I, I'm not entirely sure what they're trying to get out of that one. I mean, I guess my only thought was they're, they're trying to make you combine that like, well, the sample means 303 and the range is 10. What that means is that your two, one of your samples is like, so if the range is 10. So what that means is your data is like. 308 milligrams like you have the data 308 and then 298 milligrams i'm picking something where two data where the range is 10 and the the mean would be 303 um you could argue this 308 is very unusual but that's kind of like what's the probability of getting a 308 one out of no i i still don't i don't i don't think so i i really don't i mean like there is true that like the two samples are that way and when you say like well i'm gonna cherry pick one and just be like oh this is very unusual like this is like pretty high that probability might be pretty low <clears throat> well even yeah i don't think so so i would say no because um and maybe this this is probably the only one where i would put an asterisk if there's something i'm missing that they want you to consider but there's no way to consider it. no because um both of those events occur with a reasonably high probability greater than 5%. So there's not enough evidence to justify that the machine is not working properly. Might not be working properly, but there's no evidence for it. That one's kind of weird. <clears throat> I think the simulation one, and there's been a few years since they did a simulation question, so <clears throat> that might have been a little strange. Um, this one was a little bit weird. I think they just want you to connect the idea that the probabilities were actually pretty high. All right.